bridging mathematics, solid mensuration, perimeter, and area of plane figures. So for this video, I will be your lecturer. I'm engineer Brian J. Uh, Guzman. Okay. So we are down to the last uh, subtopic or sub uh, uh, subject of the bridging mathematics course, which is now the solid mensuration. Okay. So in this particular video, uh, we need to define, of course, what solid mensuration is and identify the different formulas for the computations of uh, perimeters and areas of plane figures. So we're going to divide the discussion for solid mensuration into two. One is for plane figures and the other is for solid. Okay. So when you say mensuration, so mensuration, this is not menstruation. Okay. Mensuration is the mathematical name for calculating the areas, volumes, lengths of sides, and other geometric parts of standard geometric shapes such as circles, spheres, polygons, prisms, cylinders, cones, etc. through the use of mathematical equations or formulas. So we are going to measure these different quantities of these common or standard geometric shapes. Okay? So uh, solid mensuration deals primarily with the various solids. The formulas developed in this text are used extensively in railway engineering, railway engineering, in road and bridge construction, in chemical and physical analysis, and in large variety of commercial and engineering projects. As we study solid mensuration, we shall see how necessary it is to have a thorough knowledge of the mensurations of solids. Okay, So this topic is very important because all throughout your career or your uh, college days in engineering, the topics from solid mensuration or the formulas that you learn from solid mensuration are very prominent when it comes to the area and the volume. So it's not, it not just on basic engineering courses, but also as you go to your higher engineering courses. So an example is when you go now to your railway engineering or highway engineering, Okay, the topic of measuring of volumes of cut and fill is very important. Okay, when you go to your mechanic subjects, the uh, topic of the areas of different uh, common geometric shapes will be very important as well. Okay, so this topic is very important to you. The good thing about solid mensuration is that it's very formula based, meaning formulas will be given for the corresponding perimeter and areas of shapes and it's up to you to apply those formulas. So critical thinking or analysis is still present, however, these problems can be easily solved using uh, the, uh, the reliance from formulas that will be given. Okay, So in solving a problem in solid mensuration, the first step you should do is to draw an appropriate figure on which all dimensions are shown. So this is where your skills in drafting okay, will come to play. So the figure must be drawn whether it be a plain figure or a solid. Second is you write down all formulas by means of which the unknown quantities are to be found. So these formulas will be given later on. And third, be sure that your work is arranged so that it can be followed at any time by yourself or another person. So this is just a suggestion when you are now presenting a solution. I know some of you okay, are, not are not yet used to writing uh, engineering lettering and not presenting your solution in an orderly manner. Okay, so same with all of your engineering subjects, solid mensuration requires a very uh, orderly solution. So you must practice that by now. A study of the examples solved in this course will aid the student in making adequate arrangements for himself. In many problems, it is helpful to employ literal quantities to denote numerical values in carrying on the work. However, in completing a problem, it is necessary finally to, uh, to replace these literal quantities by the numbers they represent. So we're using variables, okay? So let's proceed with the discussion for plane figures. So a large part of the work of this course has to do with the computation of surface areas and the volumes of solids. In this connection, it is frequently necessary to pass a plane through a solid to form a plane section. Find the area of this section and multiply it by the length of a line. Thus, it is important for the student, so that's you, to be thoroughly familiar with the mensuration of the standard plane figures. For this reason, he or she should carefully review the following list of formulas relating to plane figures. Now, if you're not a uh, STEM graduate, correct? Uh, these shapes are also, I think, also common to you. 
So some of these shapes, you've known them since your kindergarten or uh, elementary days. So now we're just going to update your knowledge by giving the formula for their area and their perimeter. Okay, so mensuration of plane figures, what is an area and what is a perimeter. Okay, so the measure of the uh, continuous line, let's say this is a plane figure. Uh, take note, plane figure are, two, are two-dimensional figures, meaning they are flat. Okay, so in the simplest, simplest possible way, I'll put it as flat. Okay, so the perimeter of a plane figure is the measure of the continuous line along the boundary or the sum of all the sides. Okay, that is now forming the figure. The perimeter is a linear quantity because we are measuring a line. Okay, so when you have a linear quantity, the unit of perimeters are of length. So it's in meters, feet, inches, etc. So Consider it as, let's say you have a lot, right, and you want to fence your lot. So the perimeter is now, okay, the amount of material or fencing material that will require or that it will require you to cover your entire lot. That's a perimeter. Therefore, the very basic definition of it is that the sum of all sides. So if your uh, figure has sides of the uh, plane figure. So the sum of all sides, therefore, the final answer must be linear. Okay, so we are measuring length here. The area, however, is the surface which is covered by the closed shape. Okay, so the surface now, so in this illustration here, is now the bounded area or the bounded region by that perimeter. So how much area is being covered by your plane figure? This particular quantity, the area, is no longer in terms of length, but in terms of length squared or quantity uh, unit squared, okay? So if perimeter is in meters, your area is in square meters. Feet, square feet, uh, and then inches, square inches, acres, hectares, and among other measurements of areas, okay? So that is your, or these are the two main properties or quantities that we are uh, concerned when we are now measuring or in the mensuration of plane figures. Therefore, for the succeeding formulas, we're going to present formulas for perimeter and area, okay? Now, for a square, so this is a very common figure, correct? For a square, this one, so a square, as you all know, is a quadrilateral four-sided polygon with all of its side equal. So let's denote the side as A, that's the side of the square or its edge. To measure its perimeter, simply add all of the edges or the sides, so A plus A plus A plus A, that's equal to 4A. To measure its area, simply multiply area times area or A squared. Okay, so that's 4A squared. For a rectangle, okay, so the rectangle is similar to a square, it's a quadrilateral, a four-legged or four-sided polygon. However, this time, okay, the opposite sides are equal, not all of them. So this side is equal in length to side B, and this side is equal in length in side A. So to solve for the perimeter of a rectangle, simply add all of the sides, so A plus A plus B plus B, or simply twice of quantity A plus B, okay? So here, for the area of your uh, rectangle, you might have already known that the area is base times height. So sometimes, or most of the time, the base of a given rectangle or a figure is the one on the horizontal, okay, or laying on the ground, or flat, or laying flat. And the height, okay, is now the vertical one. Take note that this height and B are your, or are interchangeable. Meaning if you change the orientation of your rectangle, let's say here, initially, the base of the rectangle is A, its height is B. But if you rotate it 90 degrees, its base would be B and its height would be A. But the same area will be computed. Okay? Uh, for triangles, so for triangles, the perimeter obviously is just a sum of all of the sides. So a triangle is a three-sided polygon, right? So we're done with our discussions from trigonometry. So this is what a triangle is, correct? So the perimeter is A plus B plus C. For the areas, however, there are multiple uh, formulas in which we can now use the, or we can now solve for the area of a triangle. The first one, let's say for this one, is when the base and the altitude is now given. 
So the common practice for the formula for the area for triangles or the common formula, I mean, is given as one half base times height. Okay, so that is one half base times height. Take note. So A is your area. B is the base of the triangle. So whatever leg is now horizontal, let's say, for the simplicity of the discussion. And then H, the height you're going to multiply to your B, okay, is now the altitude of the triangle. Take note that this H is not always a side, okay? However, for a right triangle, so I recall a right triangle is a triangle that has a 90 degree interior angle, the base and the height are the legs of the right triangle, okay? But here, this is no longer, okay, a right triangle, it's an oblique triangle. The base is this one. If you want to solve the area, okay, of this triangle, you must multiply it by a perpendicular height. Therefore, an angle that is making now 90 degrees with the base. So this angle must be 90 degrees before you multiply it. You cannot multiply 1 half B times the sides of an oblique triangle because these are not 90 degree angle. Okay, so this is the most common used or most commonly used formula for uh, triangles. Okay, uh, next we have your Caesar hands formula. So this one is now used when you have, okay, an interior angle and two adjacent sides not angle okay this one is very good because it can be used to a majority of cases for triangles whether it be a right triangle or an oblique triangle you can use this formula however you must satisfy this condition okay so the angle and then the two okay adjacent sides to it must be given if not then the scissor hands formula cannot be used okay so probably why it's called scissor hands is it's like it's because the two sides are forming a scissor and then this is your angle okay so the area is one half a times b the two adjacent sides okay and then the sine of the interior angle between those two sides okay so the last one or another an alternative formula for the computation of the area of a triangle is now the heron's formula or sometimes called the hero's formula or the hero of alexandria so if you'd like to um, look upon the history of this formula, so kindly do it yourself. Okay, however, this formula is only used when all of the three sides of the triangle are given. Okay, so when all of the three sides of the triangle are given, let's say A, B, and C, the Heron's formula can be used easily to solve for the corresponding area. So this is the formula, that is A is equal to the square root of S quantity times S minus A times S minus B times S minus C, where S is now the summation of all of the sides, length divided by 2, or semi-perimeter because it's half the perimeter. Okay, so this formula will now give you the area of the triangle. Take note, given all of the sides. Okay, so I've presented to you three, uh, three formulas in which you can use to solve for the area of a given triangle. So let's try to apply that here. So let's say we need to determine the perimeter and the area of the given uh, triangle. Okay, so here, uh, we do we have a right triangle? Well, it's not explicitly stated, right? Whether do we, we have a right triangle, but considering this angle here, which is now a horizontal line and a vertical line, uh, I think we can conclude that the area or the triangle is a right triangle. Okay, so let's try to solve the perimeter and the area, let's say using three methods to solve uh, of the given triangle. Okay, so as you all know, the area or the perimeter of the triangle is simply the summation of all of the sides. Okay, so our side is A, 2 meters, B, 2 meters. So if we have A and B, you can solve for the value of C using the Pythagorean theorem. So the square root of 2 squared plus 2 squared gives you 2 square root of 2. So adding them all together, 2 plus 2 plus 2 square root of 2, that gives you 6.828 meters. That is now the perimeter of this given triangle. Okay? For the area, so we have three methods, one half base height, Caesar Hans formula, and Heron's formula. Okay? So for one half base height, of course, your base sometimes or most of the time is the horizontal side or leg of the triangle. Let's say that is 2 meters. And your height, the height you're going to multiply here for the area must be a perpendicular, perpendicular height or the altitude. Okay, since this is a right triangle, correct, B is perpendicular to A, horizontal and a vertical line. Okay, so our base is 2, our height is 2, therefore, our area is 2 square meters, or 1 half 2 times 2. This is already the area, 
Okay, so if you're solving for a problem and you have you have your area already, and then this is the uh, choice or the answer in the choices, then by all means pick this one. But if you'd want to be sure, okay, you can use this or you can use the other methods if the problem allows to solve for the area again just for checking. Okay, so let's try our Caesar has Caesar hands formula and your Heron's formula. So for Caesar hand formula, remember you need uh, an angle and the two sides adjacent to it. So here it's given that theta here, this angle here, is 45 degrees. To solve, or to use the formula of Caesar, uh, Caesar hand formula, okay, so it's 1 half A times B. A and B are now, recall from our formula a while ago, the two adjacent sides. So that's because we have the same nomenclature, uh, the same variable here, A being 2 and uh, B being 2. This is not the same, okay? So this was from our formula a while ago. This denotes the two sides adjacent to angle theta. So if our angle theta is 45, this angle, the two sides are A, same, 2 meters, and B, the other one is C, which is 2 square root of 2. Okay, so it just so happens that we had the same variable, but different definition for the formula that we're going to use in the given figure. But our, again, A here is 2, our B for the formula is 2 square root of 2. Okay, so using this one, so we have this one, so 1 half, 2 meters, that is the uh, first side, times 2 square root of 2, that is the other side, and then the angle in between, sine 45 degrees. So if you put this in your calculator, if you solve it yourself, it gives you 2 meters. So we've confirmed our answer initially, therefore this is in fact 2 square meters. Okay, but we do have another or the last formula here, which is now the Heron's formula. Okay, so if we try to use the Heron's formula that requires three sides of the triangle, do we have three sides? Yes, okay, 2, 2, and 2 square root of 2. But before we use the Heron's formula, we must compute first for our semi-perimeter. The semi-perimeter is the summation of all of the three sides divided by 2. So 2 plus 2 plus 2 square root of 2 divided by 2, or all over 2, and it gives you approximately 3.41. Now, if you can, store this value in your calculator and you, or use a number or an answer with, uh, with more decimal places, that's better. That's more accurate. Okay? So, using the formula that is square root of 3.41 times 3.41 minus 2 times 3.41 minus 2 times 3.41 minus 2 square root of 2, the approximate answer you're going to get is appro uh, equal to 2 square meter or approximately equal to two square meters. So this formula or these formulas are not only limited to um, right triangles. Okay, You can use them in any type of triangles as long as you know, let's say for the base times height, what is the base and what it, its perpendicular height. For the scissor hands, as long as you know an angle and two sides adjacent to it. And for the Heron's formula, as long as you know all of the sides of the triangle, then you can solve for your area. Okay, That is for your triangles. So next, let's proceed with the discussions of other common shapes or sh standard shapes that you're going to encounter in your engineering subjects. We have your trapezoid. A trapezoid is again a quadrilater quadrilateral, so a four-sided polygon. However, for a trapezoid, the difference here between a trapezoid rectangle and a square is that the one pair of the opposite sides are parallel. So let's say... The, uh, the pair of opposite sides, so what are the opposite sides here? A and C are para uh, opposite to each other, correct? But they are not parallel to each other, meaning they, their slopes are not the same. But B1 and B2 are opposite sides and they are parallel to each other. So if a four-sided polygon has one opposite side parallel or one pair of opposite sides parallel to each other, then that is a trapezoid, okay? So how do you compute now for the perimeter and area of the trapezoid? Of course, simply add for the perimeter all of the sides. It's called A plus C plus B sub 1 plus B sub 2. By the way, the naming of the, uh, the sides are, is completely up to you as long as you know what those sides represent. Okay. For its area, however, okay, that is one half quantity base 1 plus base 2. What is base 1 and base 2? So base 1 and base 2 are the parallel bases. Okay, so these are the sides that are parallel to each other. These two sides are horizontal, therefore they are parallel with each other. So according to this, you add base 1 and base 2 and multiply it to height. What is height again? That is your altitude. Okay, therefore H must be a perpendicular height. So again, H is an altitude similar with the triangle that is your perpendicular height. 
Okay, so A and B, uh, sorry, this is not B, this must be C. Okay, so A and C are your uh, inclined sides of the trapezoid. Okay, so A and C are inclined sides of your trapezoid. As for trapezoid. Uh, parallelograms, okay. So parallelograms, this is another example of um, example of a quadrilateral, a four-sided polygon. This time, okay, both of the opposite sides or the two pairs of opposite sides are parallel to each other. Meaning this side is parallel to this one, this one is parallel to this one. Okay, so for a trapezoid, remember only one side or one pair of sides is parallel to each other. For a parallelogram, both of them are. Okay. So for the perimeter, same with the rectangle, so it's equal to 2 times a plus b. So the question is now, is a square, and is a rectangle a parallelogram? So you kindly think of that one. Okay, so the area is also base times height. However, okay, the base is always the one horizontal or on the ground or on the surface, okay, on, on the base. On the bottom, the height is still a perpendicular height, meaning you, sol you don't solve for the area of a parallelogram mu multiplying b and a. A is not an per uh, not a perpendicular height; it's a slant height. Okay, to get the area of a parallelogram, b must be multiplied to a height that is perpendicular to it. Okay, so that is for a parallelogram. Circles. Okay, so we're now on circles. So um, for a circle. The uh, perimeter is now referred to as the circumference, okay? So for the circumference of the circle, that is now equal to 2 pi r. So pi is your constant, r is the radius of the circle. So if you use the diameter to solve for the circumference, that's simply pi d. What is the relationship of diameter and radius? So the radius is half the diameter, and the diameter is twice the radius, okay? So if you're going to use... Uh, Radius for the circumference, that is 2 pi r. If you're going to use diameter, that is pi d. For the area, the area of a circle in terms of the radius is pi r squared. In terms of the diameter, 1 half, a uh, 1 fourth pi d squared. Okay, so these are basic formulas. So please memorize them. Uh, sector of a circle. So for a sector of a circle, so this is somewhat a incomplete circle because the rotation was not yet 360 degrees, okay? So it's somewhat like a slice of pizza or a pie, okay? So this is now a sector of a circle, okay? So for the sector of a circle, you have your arc length, this arc here, okay? So the length, it's not the circumference because the circumference is an arc length that covers all or the entire circle itself, okay? But this one for the sector is just partial. So the arc length here, okay? So this is a length only is equal now to r theta uh, radians, okay? What is r? The radius, of course, of your circle. What is theta r? That is now the central angle, okay? That was now used to sweep this arc, but that central angle must be in region. Now, what do you mean by a central angle? This angle, it must have a vertex on the center of the circle. That's why it's called a central angle, okay? So the central angle, must be in terms of radians because radians is a unitless quantity. So how do you convert degrees to radians? So if you recall, uh, 0 degrees is 0 radians, but 180 degrees is pi uh, radians. Okay? So 360 degrees is 2 pi rad. So we can say that what? Uh, 180 degrees is 2 pi or pi is 2 180 degrees. That's your conversion factor for degrees to radians. For the area... Okay, of this sector here, this orange region here, or the pizza, that's simply one half r squared theta r again in radians. Okay, so that is for your sector. If you're given a diameter, just simply divide it by two, so you have your radius. Okay, so what about the segment of a circle? So for a segment of the circle, that's this here. So it's the same with the sector, but this time you remove a triangular area here below. Okay. So for the arc length, it's the same, okay? So uh, r is e s is equal to r theta. But for the area of this one, so if you notice, it's simply an area of a sector minus area of a triangle, okay? So to solve for that, that will give you one half r squared, again, the radius of the circle, multiplied by quantity theta r, okay? 
theta r, meaning theta in radian, the central angle in radians, minus sine theta, this time in degrees. So, when you compute, this angle must be in radians in your calculator, and this angle must be in degrees. Of course, the default mode in your calculator must always be degrees. Okay? That is for your segment of a circle. All of these formulas, okay, are now used in the computations of areas and uh, perimeters. Of course, we're not going to discuss all of them. So it's up to you to just memorize the formula or when you encounter a problem that now uses this shape or this particular plane figure, look at your formulas so that you can solve for the area and the perimeter. Okay? But it's best if you memorize them as early as now so that it will be easy for you when you go to your higher subjects. So I think we can solve a bit more examples. Let's have this one. So a window glass is 4 feet 2 inches by 2 feet 10 inches. Find its area in square inches. Okay, This is a rectangle. Okay, So a simple uh, example, this one. So the area of a rectangle, as you all know, is base times height. However, okay, our units are a bit inconsistent because we have feet and inches together. And the problem states that we need to find the area in terms of square inches. So for consistency, you convert the measures of length to inches only. So recall that a foot okay, is equal to 12 inches. So when you say 4 feet, 2 inches, that's actually 4 feet multiplied to 12 plus 2. That's actually 50 inches. And when you say 2 feet, 10 inches, that's actually 2 times 12 plus 10 or 34 inches. Now that you have the base, 34, the height, 50 inches, you can solve for the area, which is 50 times 34, 1,700 square inches. Now you might be wondering, well, sir, what, how is this relevant? Okay, so, well, it's up to you. Let's say you are a, an engineer, let's say in a residential house, or in, in a residential building, correct? So you're, uh, you're being asked to estimate the amount of glass, let's say, that is required, okay, to cover all of the windows. So you measure the windows, and then, of course, the uh, hardware store is asking you how, uh, in area, so in terms of square inches, how much do you need? So that's one relevance of the solid mensuration. Okay, so practical problems can be uh, uh, derived or solved using solid mensuration. So a good example is in your house. So your house, of course, is designed in the very uh, basic way possible. So you try to measure the distances between your columns and outline, correct? the shape of your house or the plan of your house and compute for its total area using the formulas mentioned a while ago. Okay, so that's one. Okay, so example number three, uh, find the area of the largest circle which can be cut from a square of edge four inches. What is the area of the material wasted? So this is a very good problem in optimization. Let's say you are an industrial engineer, correct? So you want to manufacture, let's say, cans with uh, circular base or forming cylinders. Of course, you're going to roll out a, a circular, uh, let's say, sheet of metal only. So you're going to cut this out of a rectangular or uh, out of a square piece of metal, right? So the question here, of course, is you want to maximize the material that's going to be used. So there's going to be some waste here. So the largest possible, okay, Circle, of course, must now be determined. Okay, so how do you do it? So you can do it with the, the, your knowledge of solid mensuration. So here, for the largest circle, it says that the diameter of the circle, the largest circle, must be equal to the one edge of square. Because if you equate the diameter of the circle to the edge of the square, you're now going to use the largest possible, uh, or you're now going to create the largest possible circle because if you exceed four inches correct if you exceed four inches that will not form a circle if you're less than four inches yes it will form a circle but it will create a lot of waste so that's the thing here use the diameter of the circle as the uh, edge of the square or edge of the square as the diameter of the circle therefore the diameter is four inches so again area correct of a circle is one uh pi r squared using a radius or one fourth pi d squared since we have the diameter as four inches might as well use the formula for diameter which is one fourth pi d squared so this is it input in your formula 
you get the area of the largest possible circle, or the maximum area as 12.566 square inches, okay? For the ways, or for the way stage, okay, that's simply what? The area of the original square minus the area of the circle, or the green here. So this will no longer be used, correct? Because it can no longer form circle, so that's a ways already. Okay, how do you compute this area? Simply subtract. Uh, the area of the circle from the area of the original square. So that's the area of the square minus the area of the maximum or the largest circle that was cut from the square. So a square is simply edge times edge. So edge squared, so A squared. This time A is 4, correct? So 16 square inches. So for the waste stage, simply subtract. 16 minus 12.566. That gives you a waste of 3.434 square inches. When you go to your calculus, you'll learn about optimization problems, okay? How do you minimize the waste in this type of problems, okay? So, there are other formulas um, for uh, that we discussed, correct? It's up to you to try to use them in your, let's say, activities. So, how about you try this one? So, if a metal washer, one inch in diameter, is pierced by a 0.5 inch hole, what is the area of one? Uh, of one face of the washer. So this is using again circles. Okay, so the other formula so try to explore it on your own Okay, so we have one more topic for solid mensuration. That is now your solids So I'll see you on the next one if you have any questions. Okay, you kindly ask your instructor me or engineer uh, Anglo one. Okay, so thank you